Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm your host, Jeffrey, and subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. Now, the college football world has been reacting to Texas A&M all season in football for being probably the most disappointing team in college football uh, for sure of the whole season. No, there's not any other team has been as disappointing as Texas A&M. They're three and six, and they're one and five in the SEC. And Texas A&M has had great recruiting classes under Jimbo Fisher. And obviously, this 2022 recruiting class was the number one recruiting class in college football. But they have not been putting out a product on the field. And obviously, the freshmen in that 2022 class, a lot of them aren't playing or they're very young. So still, they've had great recruiting classes in the past. There's just no excuses why they're three and six. I mean, they beat Sam Houston in week one, and, and that was a good win. And they lost to Appalachian State which that should have never happened. Then they beat Miami, and they struggled in that win. And then they beat Arkansas, and Arkansas probably should have beaten if it wasn't for a doink field goal at the end. But Texas A&M has not won a game since. They've lost to Mississippi State. They did hang with Alabama, but they lost that game. And then they lost to South Carolina, Ole Miss, and Florida. And obviously, a lot of those teams are pretty good, but Texas A&M has more talent than a lot of the teams that they've lost to. And Texas A&M has had a lot of injuries this year. But a lot of people are pointing fingers at Jimbo Fisher and wondering if he should be gone. And should Jimbo Fisher be gone? I mean, obviously, you've got the rest of your schedule, Auburn, UMass, and LSU. I mean, if Texas A&M went out, they can make a bowl. But still, that is worse than anything Jimbo Fisher's done as a head coach if you look at what he's done at Florida State. He took over at Florida State in 2010, and they were 10-4, and and they were 6-2. and in the ACC, and then from there he went nine and four and five and three in the ACC, twelve and two and seven and one. And they won some big bowl games. And then obviously in 2013 with Jameis Winston at quarterback, they won the whole thing and they were undefeated at 14 and 0, won a national championship. And then in 2014 they were 13 and one, so they were still great. And then they went down a little bit and they were 10 and three and 10 and three in 2015 and 2016. And then his last season at Florida State, DeAndre Francois got hurt and they went five and six and three and five. And then Jimbo Fisher went and took the Texas A&M head coaching job. And we know the reason why Jimbo Fisher went to Texas A&M is because they paid Jimbo Fisher a lot of money to go to Texas A&M. He's going to make a lot more money at Texas A&M than he was at Florida State, and that's why he went to Texas A&M. And Texas A&M wants to challenge Alabama and win the West, and they want to be the top dog in the SEC West. But that has not happened since Jimbo Fisher has been head coach. But it's not like they've been terrible. They were 9-4 in year one in 2018, and then they were 8-5. But then they went 9-1 in 2020, and that was the year that they almost made the college football play off but they were one team short but then they went eight and four last year but then this year they're having the dreadful three and six season and everybody wants Jimbo Fisher gone but the problem is for wanting to get rid of Jimbo Fisher is the buyout he's got 86 million dollars of a buyout 86 million dollars and obviously there are a lot of people that would say that hey uh, you would can fire Jimbo Fisher with an $86 million buyout because of the fact they can just get rid of him. They have a lot of money, a lot of booster money. But do you really want to fire Jimbo Fisher with $86 million left of a buyout? I know that, again, Texas A&M can probably do it, but do you want to do it? Do you want to use your NIL funds to get rid of him? Do you want a booster to get rid of him? I mean, that's a lot of money. You paid Jimbo Fisher the money. You knew what you were getting into. You wanted Jimbo Fisher to have all the resources, and Texas A&M has all the resources. And I can understand why a lot of people want Jimbo Fisher gone because of the fact they're not winning enough. But that buyout is huge. Texas A&M paid him that money, or they're going to have to pay him that money if they fire him, and that they, they knew what they were getting into, and they did a – a contract that big now obviously some people are saying that they could put a scandal on Jimbo Fisher and there's been some scandals at Texas A&M and they could fire him without cause I don't know if that's going to happen or not if that happens and obviously their hands will be clean even if, if Texas A&M is a program is not but still 86 million dollars of buyout is there right now and I just don't see them firing Jimbo Fisher right now plus he has had a lot of goodwill with the recruiting classes and even though since they're struggling some of their top players are decommitting from Texas A&M in the next 2023 class, which has moved down their recruiting classes in 2023, as you can see. The recruiting ranking right now in 2023 is at number 23, and obviously it was higher, but a lot of players are decommitting. As you saw, at Anthony Hill, five-star recruit, is decommitted because of their performance this season. But he, Jimbo Fisher still has a lot of goodwill from what he did in past classes. I mean, as you can see in 2022, 
he had the number one class. And obviously, they're still freshmen. And if they get older, a year or two older, that's going to help Jimbo Fisher out a lot in the coming year. And then in 2021, you go back to 2021, what was uh, Texas A&M's recruiting class? They were eighth in the country. So they have tons of talent that's still really young. And then in 2020, you look at their recruiting ranking, and the recruiting ranking was six. So Jimbo Fisher has a lot of young guys on his team, and they still need to be developed. And even though there's some players decommitting from Texas A&M in the upcoming class, but he still has tons of talent on the team that is still young. And I, obviously, I know that's a reason to say that they should be way better than three and six, way better than what their record is showing with being three and six and one and five in the SEC. That is definitely a, an understandable reason they should be a lot better than that. They have all the talent in the world. And I understand that that is an argument to say you should get rid of them, but I also would argue that they still have a lot of young talent that needs to be uh, that needs to be developed. And maybe if Texas A&M can get better next year, they'll be a lot better because obviously they have had a lot of close losses. App State was close. Alabama was close. South Carolina and Ole Miss. If you win those four games, instead of them being three and six, they're seven and two. So it's not like Texas A&M has been completely deplorable. They're not that bad. Obviously, they should not be three and six. I completely agree. And obviously, I know why everybody is mad at Jimbo Fisher, but you got to give them more time. Also, the buyout of the $86 million, you just cannot get rid of them. And I don't think that they're going to get rid of them unless they get rid of them without calls or something. But obviously, there's a lot of calls for concern. I know a lot of people are upset with Jimbo Fisher, but. For the most part, he's had a great record as a head coach. Obviously, Texas A&M not doing what he needs to be doing with what they're paying him. But he's had a lot of great recruiting classes, as shown in the past. And I think that that's going to be enough just for now to keep him, plus with the buyout. But what's going to move forward for Texas A&M, what Texas A&M needs to do in the coming year is they need to – regroup and they need to get try to keep their team together and not have a lot of exits to the portal like they're getting decommits because that is alarming with the 2023 commits that are decommitting from Texas a and because of their performance. If they can keep most of their players on their team, develop them and improve for next year, then I think Jimbo Fisher is going to be fine. But if they keep going in the wrong direction, players transfer out of the program, they get a lot of decommits in the recruiting classes, they're not able to get the high talent, the top 10 recruiting class that Jimbo was brought in. And once that buyout starts to creep lower and lower in the coming years, I think Jimbo Fisher is going to be gone. But I would not fire Jimbo Fisher right now because I think he still needs time to develop these players. I think that uh, Texas A&M needs to be a little bit more patient. They have a big buyout with Jimbo Fisher, and I think he needs to be given more time. But it is definitely alarming to see with Texas A&M why they're not as good. Is it because Jimbo Fisher is not coaching up the players right? I don't know exactly what is wrong with Texas A&M, but a lot of people are pointing fingers at Jimbo Fisher and saying that he's not doing his job to develop the players. But it's going to be very interesting to see what comes in in the coming years to see if Jimbo Fisher is still the head coach of Texas A&M, whether he survives and whether he's able to turn the program around because there is a lot of problems with Texas A&M and it does need to be resolved. So Texas A&M can challenge in the SEC West and do exactly what they're paying Jimbo Fisher for or whatever coach they get in the future. If they fire Jimbo Fisher, can turn Texas A&M around and make them a really good SEC West program. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Comment down below whether you think Jimbo Fisher should be fired. What's wrong with Texas a and I will see you next time.